this morning and yesterday evening as I was preparing mentally for the message that he had for me on this morning. I got to look at some of the things that are around the water. There's a lot of wildlife that I, that I, I just am in awe of still 10 years later. The ducks and the frogs and the fish. I've watched people fish out there every day for 10 years. I never seen them catch anything. <laughs> never. And the fish. I see the fish. <laughs> they just can't catch them. <laughs> the birds. We have Canadian geese and we have rabbits and foxes and see some deer sometime. But what I see always is trees. There's lots of trees around that body of water. I love to look out there no matter what time of the year, depending on the season, depends on the type of beauty that I see. Spring is beautiful when they start to bloom and the lushness of the leaves. Summer is even more beautiful when the flowers are in bloom and the wildlife is in. But fall is nice too. I really like it when the leaves start to change because they have so many different colors. And even in the winter time, after the leaves fall off, it's still nice. And it's especially beautiful if there's a snow. Right after it snows and the snow is on the branches with no leaves, it's also very beautiful. Sometimes the lake freezes over. The trees are always there, no matter what they are bearing, what type of leaves and or fruit they are bearing, no matter what season. They're always there. Some of those trees are different sizes and shapes. Some of them have different color leaves, different types of leaves. Some of them are fruit bearing. Some of them may bear a different type of fruit. Some of them may have the fruit pop quickly. Some may take longer. Some of them are bigger. Some of them are smaller. Some of them are younger. Some of them are older. But they are all planted by the water. We've had some storms over the years, and sometimes some of the trees in the neighborhood will fall down. I've seen some of them fall because of electric storms. I've seen some of them fall when we have a heavy snow. I've seen some of them get infected by various diseases. But I realized on this morning, I've never seen the ones that are planted by the water have a problem. Never. They're not affected by the lightning. They're not affected by the heavy snow. To me, that's a magnificent. It's still a tree. Never seen one of them fall off. Never even seen one of the branches fall off. They're not affected by the change of the season. They're not affected by, it seems, insects or some of the other diseases or some of the other things that happen to other trees. Really, the ones that are by the water seem almost invincible. If you go with me to the book of Proverbs on this morning, 18 and 21. Matter of fact, you don't even have to turn there. Let me just touch on it for you. It says that the power of life and death are in the power of the tongue. So you can speak life into any situation if you know who you are, or you can speak death into any situation if you don't know who you are, Amen. even if it's momentary. So basically what you're saying is that I have the power to co-create by what comes out of my mouth. So I could leave it there and that'd be the end of the service. I could say, yeah, give the Lord a good hearty amen and we all go home and you guys could say, wow, he said that the power of life and death are in the tongue. And it's true. But what does it mean? How does it work for me and you? How does it work in my everyday life? How am I able to invoke that on a regular basis? I just told you. See, I gave you the end of the story in the beginning. I told you about my journey. I told you how I got led to the house. I told you how long it took me to get led to the house. 
told you why I got led to the house, because I got frustrated with seeing it this way and feeling it that way. It's in here, but it's not looking like that out here. So I went to God with a list of what I needed. God, I, can, I don't, can't afford a house like this, nor do I want it. But I, it's in me to get one on the water. So this is what I need. In an instant, he told me where to go or how to get what I needed. In one instant, he changed my whole life. Even though I spent over a year trying to reconcile that which was on the inside with that which was on the outside by myself. So really what he's saying is that the power of life and death are in the tongue, but really you have to use that tongue to speak to him to invoke your creative power. Yes. <laughs> that sounds good to you, It sounds very churchy, but how do I make that? See, I, I want to break it down so like I'm six years old. I don't want to miss a single piece of it. I don't want to make any mistakes. So, God, you have to break it down a little bit more for me so I understand. In the book of Jeremiah, chapter 17 and verse 8, you might want to go to that one. As co-creators, our roots are firmly established in him. Our roots. Our roots, like the roots of the trees near the water. The word root is defined as part of a plant or tree that grows underground. So the growing is not seen with the natural eye, yet the root gets water from the ground. The water, the source of life, water also means the spirit, holds the plant or tree in place. Stability. So what you're saying, God, is that the root to the source, which would be the water or the spirit, is underground. It's unseen. Oftentimes, the things that he has us do to strengthen our root in him would be unseen. Amen. Amen. He'll have us pray early in the morning. The Bible says, pray, seek me early and you will find me. Pre-dawn prayers, before you see other people, before you see yourself, before you see daylight. See him. Amen. Amen. As a matter of fact, he's bringing this to my memory now. The prayer about where I should look for the house 10 years ago, 10 plus years ago, was pre-dawn. Why don't you ask him where you should go for whatever it is that you're looking for right now? Hey. Like the root of a tree that goes deep in the dirt, grabbing hold and holding on tightly to give the tree a solid base and stability. So are we, or so should we be at this level in God? I would imagine right now, if you are slightly confused or more than slightly confused about what your next move is, especially if you're at a place to where it looks absolutely contrary to what you're being guided and pulled to do, and it doesn't make any sense, God, this is where you're leading me, but this is what it looks like, this is what I have, but this is what I need, this is what I want, but this is what I'm yearning for. Ah. How do I reconcile the two? He says, I'm showing you how to reconcile the two dimensions, but not only am I showing it to you one time, I'm invoking, I'm imparting my co-creative nature in you. Jeremiah 17 and 8 says, we are like trees planted along the riverbank with roots that reach deep into the water, deep into the water. Such trees are not bothered by heat, are worried by long months of drought. Their leaves stay green and they never stop producing fruit. So basically, God, if I'm rooted in you, it doesn't matter what season it is. That's right. That's right. That's right. Hmm. And if I'm rooted in you, it doesn't matter how hot it gets. Never seen those trees by the water burn up. Never seen the leaves wither. And basically, God, it doesn't matter how long a drought might be. So it might not rain for four weeks, but the trees that are planted by the water are still getting fed by the essence of life. How can I get a little bit more of that, God? How can I get a 
get some more. First of all, you have to understand that there are different types of trees. There's some big trees. There's some small trees. There's some oak trees. There's some pine trees. There's some evergreens. There's some fruit trees. And even with the fruit trees, there's different types of fruit. You could have a cherry tree, which I would imagine probably blooms at a slightly different time than an apple tree. You can have a peach tree that probably blooms differently than a cherry tree. Or an orange tree. Some may need less water, some may need more. And even if it's a fruit-bearing tree, the fruit comes at a different rate and size. Amen. So I could have a piece of fruit this big on a grapefruit tree, but I might also have one this big that's just beginning to bud. Yes. Amen. Amen. So what am I saying? You have to understand first that you are a tree, that you're planted by the water, that even if you're not completely rooted to the depth that you desire, you can be, just go deeper in your root in God. If you're not quite sure how, then ask him for understanding. God, how do I get more? Be prepared to receive the instruction. Ah, see, oh. That's, that's the tricky part, because sometimes in our human intellect, we, we, we want to do it our way. And most often, if it's not happening the way you want to, it's because you're not doing it the way that he said to. Amen. Amen. And oftentimes, the higher you go and the deeper you go, the more simplistic the instruction and the more contrary it is to your intellect. Amen. Well, good. You told me to go. Uh, you, this is what you're putting in me, but I need to go this way. And he's telling you to do something very elementary, and it doesn't make sense to your mind because it should be more complex, or it should be more glorified, or it should be more fanfare. Or the other way. Sometimes people want to be so quiet about it, they don't want anybody to know that God is blessing them. And he wants to use you as a shining example for his kingdom. Power of life and death are in the tongue. The co co creative power. Are found in the root. The more deeper the, the deeper the root, the more creative you are. Basically, the more you realize you're a fruit bearing tree, the more you will bear fruit. Amen. The deeper you go in God, the more He will allow you to bear fruit. Amen. The more you have the understanding that the fruit you bear also comes at different times, at different seasons, at different rates. Trees rooted. How many people right now would like to be able to speak and have him change a situation completely? Or two, probably one or two major situations. And in your mind, now catch this, in your mind, if that happened, then you'd be good. Many people know what I'm talking about. You wouldn't. So if you took a snapshot of your situation right now, and you said, oh, if I only had this one piece, if I only had this one piece of fruit, if I had one piece of fruit, then my life would be complete. I would say, no. Because if you had one piece of fruit, all you would need is a bowl on the center of your table. You put that piece of fruit in there, your life is done. The reason he hasn't blessed you with that piece of fruit is because he has so much for you. Amen. He don't want to give you a piece of fruit. You can get that from Safeway. He wants, to, <laughs> he wants you to know that not only are you a fruit tree, but you have the power with his spirit rooted in him to speak to the fruit and have it grow. So God was telling me, I'm a fruit tree? Yes. Now, some of you already knew you were a little fruity, but. <laughs> <laughs> Not only are you a fruit tree, you have the ability to speak into existence new fruit. Amen. You have the ability to speak into existence the pruning of the leaves and the fruit that are not bearing fruit properly. Amen. Amen.
You are a self-pruning, self-producing fruit tree. Oh, that's a good place to praise it. But not only are you a self-pruning, self-producing fruit tree, you have the ability to speak into existence other fruit trees. You have the ability to fertilize other plants for growth. And even if your fruit is apple and her fruit is peach, you can speak and fertilize her fruit tree, even if that's not exactly the type of fruit you bear. You can bless somebody that has a gift for healing. And you speak an encouraging word into them so that they go deeper into the root of, of God so that they have more healing. Your gift may be prophecy. I may speak that into you and your gift may grow and multiply fruitfully. Amen. Your gift may be giving. You're charitable. You help homeless people and, and you go to the hospitals. And my speaking into your life may help in that area. Amen. Amen. You may have a gift with children. You may have a gift with the elderly. You may have a gift with... I'll pray for you. <laughs> whatever it is, whatever you have, do you have enough fruit on your fruit tree? And the fruit that you're bearing, are you bearing it in stages? If I had 100 apples on my apple tree and they all bloomed at the same time and they all fell off at the same time, where am I left? That's right. Amen. Huh? That's a bare fruit tree, isn't it? Yeah. See, I want to bear fruit all year long. All year long. Let me go just a little further. Some of the other fruits would be love. Some people have the gift of joy. Some people have the gift of patience. Not one of the ones I was born with, but certainly he's been working on me. <laughs> you can bear testimony by looking at some of your neighbors. <laughs> Peace. There are many, many different types of spiritual gifts or things that we would call fruit that he is manifesting in great abundance in you and the people around you. Most of us, selfishly, want to have the co-creative power. Can I be honest? So that we can create the things that we think would make us happy at that moment in time in our life. Almost like one of those, you know, I dream a genie. You know, what do you want, master? And, you know, how, what she, how she doing? Blink her eyes. Oh, a new Rolls Royce. Oh, thank you. No, it doesn't exactly work that way. However, the more mature that you become in using your co-creative power, the easier it is for you to call most things into existence, especially if it's in the direct will of God. Amen. 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 Now, what I have learned to do, what I've learned to do, now remember, we're made in his image. So if we function in the way that niceties make us feel good to do something for somebody, He's kind of the same way. Or if I go before him in a pre-dawn prayer and I tell him how awesome he is and I mean it sincerely. And while I'm telling him, I'm thinking in my heart of some amazing things that he's done recently, over the years. How he's blessed me, how he's blessed my family, how he blessed the people around me. How he's blessed the church, the anointing that he's placed on my life, the miracles that he's worked for myself, people around me, people I don't even know. Things that I've heard as feedback for the people around me that pray for other people. Amen. If I just marvel in his awesomeness for a while and sincerely mean it. And then I ask him or tell him, God, I'm so thankful that you use me as your servant. Now, he uses me, but he uses you also. Amen. Okay? The enemy will try to make you think, oh, I'm insignificant in the kingdom. No, you're not. If you prayed for your child because they had a head cold, he's using you. And then you tell him that you want to understand how he can use you more for his glory. Amen. Amen. For his glory. Ah, I got somebody right there. I got two of you right there. There's a couple people in there praying, oh, God, I want to 
No, you won't. Let me come in closer. You want to come in closer? Ask him to move your will out of the way and invoke his will. And then come to the point you're like an angel for where he have you to go. And then after you do that, when he shows you something, probably it's going to be something he already told you to do a few weeks or a few months ago. But once you accept it, you will be amazed at what it is that opens up for you. Now, I got to tell you that the enemy's job is to try to invoke some fear or some doubt. So right after you confess it, the enemy is going to be waiting there like a big bully to make you think you didn't get it. <laughs> Knock him out in a couple little prayers and then step into your next dimension of co-creative power. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 40, and I'm closing in just a moment. Isaiah, chapter 40, in verse 31 I'm sorry, 40, yes, and 31. It says that, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. And in this season of blessing, this is a blessed time of the year. It's a supernatural portal. Most of the miracles that Jesus did were done at this time of the year. I believe it's because people are generally more loving. They're more open. Who knows why it's a portal? It just is. And for some of you, you see other people with the manifestation of their blessings. The enemy's going to mess with you and say, ah, you know, where's mine? If yours is taking longer than you think it should, which it always does in our humanity, but yours is taking, even if you measure time, longer than somebody else. He showed me that a manifestation, a creative manifestation, if you're calling forth a fly, is going to happen a lot quicker than if you're calling forth an, an, an elephant. In other words, the bigger the blessing, the longer it may take to manifest. Amen. Amen. So... If it hasn't happened as quickly as you would like, but he's still showing you some big stuff, and the big stuff is not reconciling with what you're feeling and seeing in, uh, in, in the natural. So, God, here you're telling me I'm going to be a, a millionaire, and I, you know, I got a negative account balance. Something's not lining up. What should I do? Where should I go look? This is what I need. Show me, God, what I should be doing to be in line. And also touch me with how you want me to be used for your glory. Amen. Let me give you one other piece, too. Oftentimes, the enemy will think that when we go before God, that we have to be churchy and deep and prolific and be perfect in our theological dissection of the word. We have to be able to pontificate and extrapolate the word for God. No. He gave us the word. It's for us. He know the word. It's him. It's the essence of his spirit. So when you go before him, the more simplistic you make your request, the easier it is to receive. Amen. Amen. He wants us to come before him like little children. You follow me? Yeah. Sometimes when we pray together or pray in groups, it's almost a contest to see who can get deep or the deepest or the why. It should be once, I mean, there's a protocol. There's a way to go before him. But once you get in to his presence, it should be easy. It's like, it's like talking to your, if you're a small child, talking to your daddy. You follow me? So, God, if I want your co-creative power to be invoked, if I, if I want to have more intimacy with you, then I need to be more open and sincere with you. If I want more, then I have to give you more. Amen. Sincerely. Sincerely. And I have to be, I had a whole different message. I have to be, I have to be honest with you, God. Because sometimes in our elementary walk, we will try to put on a front for God and hide the stuff that ain't quite right. Like we're trying to sweep it under the rug, but he made the rug. Amen. Amen. I, the parts that are not quite right, which should be the parts that you're sharing with him. You're never going to be perfect in this human vessel. But you should always be moving toward perfection. It's a verb. It's a moving target. 
Well, as you become more and more rooted, because your tree is planted by the water, the deeper the roots go, the bigger the tree is. The bigger the tree, the bigger the trunk. The bigger the trunk, the bigger the branches. The bigger the branches, the more fruit you can bear. The more fruit you bear, the more fruit you will bear. The more fruit you will bear, the more power you have. The more power you have, the more blessed you are. The more blessed you are, the more he will bless you. The more he blesses you, the more you'll be a blessing to other people. The more you're blessing other people, the more it multiplies. And then the word comes true, which is the promises of Abraham, blessing to bless, multiplying to multiply, and you are an absolute operation of his co-creative power. So, be enlightened to the fact that, yes, you are a tree. You are a fruit-bearing tree. And if you hear my voice this morning, not only do you bear fruit, but you're a tree that is planted by the water. So your mission is to have those roots go deeper into the soil, deep, deep, deep into the water, which represents his spirit. And the deeper the root goes, the bigger the trunk goes, the bigger the branch grows, the more fruit you grow. And the more fruit you grow for him, the more he manifests the blessings for you in your life.